Hey guys, it's Jasmine and that was Puppy and Alfred. And today we are going to talk about Clever with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Mm, not exactly. Oh yes, right, right. I mean liver and raw cat food. That's better. Specifically, we are going to talk about beef liver and if you can use that instead of chicken liver when making homemade raw cat food, as well as a few other kinds of livers. For example, if you wanted to use lamb liver or veal liver or duck liver. We are also going to get more into vitamin A and if you missed last week's video, this is kind of a part two to that video, so make sure you go check that out. Before we get started, if you are new to this channel and into cat stuff, especially having to do with feline nutrition and raw cat food, or if you're into things for humans, including workouts and fitness and stress management tips and whatever else I feel like posting, then please make sure to click that subscribe button below if you are here on YouTube, or if you're on Facebook, make sure to follow our page Cat Lady Fitness because we do put out a new video every cat or day and then some fun stuff sprinkled in throughout the week. All right, so let's get into it. Last week, we spoke about the liver in general and what the function is and the nutrients it provides, but also how it could be very, very dangerous if your cat ingests too much because it has such high concentrated levels of vitamin A. Now, the daily recommended allowance for vitamin A for an adult cat of average size, which is considered to be around nine to 10 pounds, and also a cat who consumes 250 calories daily, is 63 micrograms, or that would be 210 IUs of vitamin A as retinol. Now, just so you know, one IU, and that stands for international unit, of vitamin A as retinol is 0.3 micrograms. Now to answer the question, if you can substitute beef liver for chicken liver in your raw cat food recipe, I went ahead and made a chart comparing not only beef liver, but also lamb, veal, and duck liver, just so we get a broader range to look at. And I actually have um, my written out one here, but I'm going to make one for you guys to look at too so that we can we can go over it together like a happy family so here is the chart of all of the different livers that i compared and all of this information was recorded from the usda national nutrient database you can see that the beef liver lamb and veal liver are all considered under the subcategory of variety meats and byproducts while the information for the chicken liver was available in all classes and the info for the duck liver was only available in the domesticated subclass and for the purpose of this we are looking at the nutrient information for 100 grams of each liver chicken liver actually has the second highest amount of iron in milligrams it also has the second highest in folate which is very important for your cat's health unsurprisingly it also has the lowest b12 compared to other animals but animals get the b12 in their system from their diet and since chicken has so much of a shorter lifespan than these other animals and also doesn't have the same diet as say a cow or a lamb, this gives a good explanation to why the B12 is low. And we don't have to worry about that anyway because we also add a B complex vitamin into your raw cat food, which if you haven't seen it, I have a video about the importance of B vitamins for your cat and I will link that in the description below. But since liver is the main source of vitamin A and that's the nutrient or vitamin that we want to be careful and cautious of giving our cat too much of, you can see that the chicken liver has the lowest amount of vitamin A. So looking at the vitamin A in international units versus RAE on this chart, you can see that the international units are three times roundabout the amount of the vitamin A and RAE. I just thought that was important to point out because I know somebody is going to ask, what are these two numbers and what do they mean? Now let's get to answering the actual question if you can use other livers to substitute for the chicken liver. If you couldn't tell already, the answer is preferably not except for the beef liver. Now looking at the duck liver, you can see 
that the iron is crazy high. It is 30.53 milligrams. The folate is also incredibly high. It is the highest in cholesterol as well. And the vitamin A is the highest of any of these liver options with the international units coming in at nearly 40,000. And keep in mind, this is domesticated duck liver. So if you've heard of foie gras, which is a very, very expensive, bougie, fancy dish, these domesticated ducks are purposefully fed and force fed to get as fat as possible in order to make this incredibly fancy, coveted foie gras dish. However, I digress. Let's look at the next one over, which is the veal liver, and you can see that that is still exceptionally high in vitamin A, both the international units and RAE, because after all, they equal out, and that is also at above 39,000 IUs. Again, more doesn't necessarily mean better, and anything in excess can be harmful, especially in a fat-soluble vitamin such as vitamin A, and especially for such a small creature as your feline fur baby. Looking at lamb liver, you can see that it has some pretty decent numbers that are comparable to everything else. It's the highest in niacin, and definitely by far the highest in vitamin B12. But taking a peek at those vitamin A numbers, it's also much higher than the beef and the chicken. Now let's look at the beef liver. So you can see that the beef liver is the only one that actually had information available for vitamin D, and it has 49 international units of that. It's also very high in all of the B vitamins. Again, that's because of the diet that a cow eats. It's the lowest in dietary cholesterol at 275 milligrams. And it also had the selenium information available, which was 39.7 micrograms. And it also has the highest protein along with the lamb liver. They're pretty much the same. And looking at the vitamin A, you can see that it's pretty low and close to what the chicken liver provides. So while the chicken liver provides a little bit over 11,000 international units of vitamin A per 100 grams, the beef liver provides a little bit less than 17,000. And also remember that none of this is strict and for sure 100% accurate. Every animal is going to be different and I've talked about this in other videos. So how you see these measurements, even though this is from the most reputable source technically being that it's the USDA's National Nutrient Database. There's always going to be some kind of, of variable when it comes to these really minuscule numbers. So now that we've actually looked this over and you guys have a visual of the comparison in numbers when it comes to nutrients, what is the final verdict? Can you substitute any other animal liver for chicken liver when you're making your raw cat food recipe? Chicken liver is best, but nutritionally, beef liver comes in a close second if you wanted to use it as a substitute for the chicken liver in the recipe. That said, it would be a good idea to avoid duck liver altogether. I'd also definitely avoid using veal liver and honestly even the lamb liver just to be safe. That said, remember like I mentioned in last week's video, you only want to use 5 to 10 percent maximum of secreting organs or livers in your raw cat food. And especially if you're going to use beef liver, you want to make sure that you seek out the highest quality possible. So that would be from a pasture raised grass-fed cows. And another little tip I want to throw in when it comes to your cats, remember if you needed a reminder that cats and felines are very finicky creatures. So there is a chance if you do happen to switch up the liver in the recipe from chicken to beef that your cats can kind of be a little bit skeptical of it or maybe seem like they don't like their food or the complete opposite can happen and if your cat for some reason had an aversion to the type of chicken liver you were using and you switched it to beef they can just suddenly start inhaling their food it really is a case-to-case -case basis and remember i do have a video about reasons why your cat is potentially not eating or why your cat stopped eating their food which i will also link in the description below and again if you're new here please make sure to check out the cat stuff playlist 
here on YouTube, or you can just find it directly at catladyfitness.com slash videos. It's nearly a guarantee, especially if you're new here and new to raw cat food, that the answer to your question, as unique as I'm sure you think it may be, is already out there in a video that we've made. So make sure to check that playlist and spoiler alert, I haven't mentioned it, but I will hear there is a book coming out, which is another thing that I've been working on for you guys. I had a timeline for it, but I keep adding more and more. So just stay tuned because I promise I will announce it here first. And I think it will be really, really helpful for you guys. Instead of having to watch hours and hours of videos, you will have a go-to resource that you can just scroll or flip to a page and get the answer to the most common questions when it comes to raw cat food. All right, guys, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. Please remember to click that thumbs up below if you did, because that helps us get seen and introduced to people who may not know about the benefits of raw cat food yet. Also feel free to share this video with any fellow cat parents or people interested in consuming liver that you know. And also I do post stories every now and then here on YouTube in the stories option of Puppy and Alfred just living their best life. And I did earlier today, so make sure you go catch that because it's pretty darn cute. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We're creeping up on 50,000 subscribers, which is really exciting, especially because I have a pretty cool collaborative giveaway planned. So stay tuned for that. Hey, honey. Alfred, you want to come say hi? Okay, well, everybody's preoccupied right now because it's apparently afternoon nap time. Alfred is currently napping at my feet while puppy is in a loaf over there. So I'm not going to interrupt them right now. I'm going to get on with the day, but thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.